Hello math fans, welcome to this video. Now, I'm assuming you know what the imaginary unit is, which is the thing that we use to represent imaginary numbers. Say if we want to calculate the square root of negative 4, we can just split this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2, and by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i, and that's what we call the imaginary unit. So by definition, i is square root of negative 1, or i squared is negative 1, just like that. And from this you can uh, find some of the uh, lower powers of i, for example, i to power 1, that's trivial, that's i. i squared is negative 1 by definition, i cubed is negative i, i to the power 4 is 1, because i to the power 4 is just i squared squared, that's negative 1 squared. i cubed is just um, i squared times i to the power 1, so that's negative 1 times i, which is just i. But let's see what happens if you, you know, want to calculate very high powers of i. Let's say i to the power 60, i to the power 2021, 20, or even something larger. How do we do that? Now, before we actually do that, let me show you a very interesting pattern in these uh, numbers here, in these powers of i. So I've written out the powers of i up to i to the 12th power, and something interesting is happening here. If you can notice, every after four iterations, the answers are actually repeating each other, and what that means for us as mathematicians is that we can actually write this in some kind of modular system, because these are repeating each other, and so it would be just sufficient to memorize only the first four or to know how to calculate the first four and using those we can calculate the rest. And so looking at this I could as well say that if you ever want to calculate a power of i, uh, let's say i to the power any arbitrary number n, um, for this video I'm assuming n is positive but this should be able to work for negative powers because if you can calculate i to the power n, i to the power negative n is just i to the power n to the power negative 1 which is easy. Yeah, so I'm just going to say n is uh, a positive integer but you should be able to do this for uh, uh, even negative uh, value. So if we want to calculate the power of i, uh, i to the power n, uh, i to the nth power that should be equal to or equivalent to i to the power r, where r is n, but written in finite form or mod 4 as we like to call it. Now, why do I write it in mod 4? That's simply because these answers are repeating themselves after 4, uh, uh, after four iterations. Let me just say it like that. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4. And boom, the pattern repeats again after four times, it repeats again. So there we have it. Now let, let's, let's test it with, uh, with some uh, relatively higher power and see how that works. Let me, let me start off with something that is going to be very easy for us to prove. Let's say i to the power 13. So i to the power 13, what I'm going to do is... Now, of course, uh, I, I didn't uh, talk about what this means. Uh, N mod 4, this simply means a system of counting where we start from 0 and stop at 3, and then we repeat again. And, and you can simply find the value of R. Uh, uh, I don't think I can represent this in any better way, but the, the way you get R here is that you just get N, you divide by 4, and the remainder is going to be the value of r. That's, that's the modular system. I will actually leave a link in the description to uh, some website, probably Khan Academy or somewhere where you can read more about the modular arithmetic. That shouldn't be very hard. So let's, let's write 13 in mod 4. So 13 is, okay, so, oops, just do this. Okay, so um, 13 in mod 4, that should be, so I'm going to get 13, I divide that by 4, and of course that's going to be 3, and then the remainder 
is just a 1, so 1 is the answer. So 13 written in mod 4 is actually a 1. So instead of writing i to the power 13, this is the same as i to the power 1, which, as we already know, is just i. And of course, the pattern will just keep repeating, but why not, uh, why not just do it from scratch and see if that works? Now, uh, uh, um, uh, let's assume we already trust that i to the power 12 equals 1. We already know that this is true, uh, and you can prove that, of course. So let's say i to the power 12 times i, which of course becomes i to the power 13. And you can already see that if this is 1 times i, then that's going to be a, an i, okay? There you go, so that's right. Uh, so this, this actually works for even higher powers, that's the, the beauty with it. Let's, let's try it out with uh, really huge powers. So I'll actually use the examples that I alluded to at the beginning. Let's say i to the power 60. So i to the power 60. Uh, uh, 60 in mod 4, that's going to be 60 uh, divided by 4, which is actually uh, 15 remainder 0. So that's the same as i to the power 0, which is, by the laws of indices, just a 1. And there you go. Let's say i to the power, what was my other example? Let's say 2021, 20, okay? So let's see 2021 20, divided by 4. That's going to be 505 remainder 1. So that's the same as i to the power. I'll just, I'll just show that here, just in case. So 2021 uh, 20, in mod 4. What's that going to be? So I get 2021, 20, I divide that by 4, that's going to be 505, remainder 1, so that's the same as i to the power 1, oops, which is also i, and uh, what was the other one? i to the power 739, we can also do that, let me just do it, uh, okay, I'll just clean this off i to the power 739 okay let's see so i'm going to write 739 in mod 4 what should that be so i get 739 divide that by 4 that's going to give me i think it's 184 with a remainder of 3, I guess that should be right, let's see, 184 times 4, 7, that's 6, yeah, that's it, so this is actually 3, so this i to the power 7, 39 is the same as i to the power 3, and we already know i to the power 3 is just negative i, so there yeah, we have it. Uh, i to the power 739. So using this you can actually calculate any power of i regardless of how big it is because it will always come back to only these uh, first four answers that we have here. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, leave a comment about what you think on this video. I'll see you in my other videos. Bye.